What is the king of all controllers? That's what we're talking about. That doesn't mean the best controller. That doesn't mean the most important controller, but that just means the king. It's right here. This is the Fennec PC game controller. Obviously the king, right? Right here. <laughs> Could be similar. Now, what makes something the king? Well, it has to be a controller that will work across many different things. It has to be a button layout that's familiar and that will work with games on multiple different platforms. So that's what we're really looking for here. But in order to get to that, we're gonna talk about the steps and the developments that led to the creation of sort of the ubiquitous layout that we see across most platforms. But first we gotta start somewhere. Before we get started, let's head over to WhoKeys and unlock our copy of Windows. By using coupon code TS25, you can get 25% off these prices here. I use Windows 10 Pro. You can also get Windows 10 Home, and both of these will upgrade to Windows 11. You can get that. Also, note that the Windows 10 keys have been working with Windows 11. Google it and make sure that this is still a thing whenever you're purchasing your key. Also, I wanna note that if you get Windows 10 Home and you upgrade it to Windows 11, they will force you to use an online account. With Windows 11 Pro, however, you can use a local account, just so you know. You can also get Office 2019 with that same discount, or if you like, you can get Windows 10 Pro and Office 2019 in a bundle and save even more. Go ahead and put TS25 in here as your coupon code, hit it apply, and then you can see we can get Windows 10 Pro for 1485. Once you're finished, if you wanna access your key, you click on your name on the top right click on user center and you'll see my purchase orders right here you'll be able to view the keys that you've purchased just by clicking on view keys and codes then you will see your code right here just go ahead and copy this code press start type activate and you'll see activation settings come up click on that then click change product key right there you can paste in your code and hit next and then you will be activated it's very simple so don't pay those retail prices for your copy of windows or office head over to whokeys.com and use coupon code ts25 did this start everything? No, that didn't. The Super Nintendo controller by Lance Barr. That's not a Super Nintendo controller. What is this? I, that's for another video. I just want to talk about the progression of going from essentially this and how we got to crowning one configuration to be like the ruling configuration over all of them. The Super Nintendo controller developed by Lance Barr was the template that turned into this, which is sort of an update on the Super Nintendo uh, controller. You have the buttons here, and these mean yes and no. So you have the standard buttons here, but they added a couple of things. They added an extra button for your middle finger on the back. And then beyond that, they gave it a better grip. So this became the new baseline, but it was all based on the Super Nintendo. You're going to notice something in this video. Nintendo seems to be the company that is really pushing changes, and everyone else seems to be emulating them. But this became uh, a very ergonomic and a very comfortable design, probably one of the best controllers ever made, but it doesn't have analog and everything was going 3D and moving around in 3D worlds, well, you need analog controllers. That's when this came in. This is a generic version, but I like the color. I've got the real version over there, but it's just the gray one. This is the N64 controller. If you're someone who's really new to uh, gaming or if you're someone who's too young to know what's up, you're going to look at this and be like, what in the hell is going on there? Well, we have two controllers in one because this was the controller that bridged the generation between side scrollers, 2D games, pixel art games, and polygonal games that, you know, had 3D environments so you can move around that way. So this controller was mainly developed and tested on Mario 64 and Shigeru Miyamoto had a lot to do with that. So the way you would hold it for most games is like this. And you have your L and R buttons still here, but on the back, it's called a Z button when it's in the middle and an L button when it's on the side. So you would hold the controller like this and mostly just ignore this over here because you're not really gonna be pressing that. So it's sort of an either or situation. And then you would play your analog games like this. This became like your okay and yes and no buttons, but it's a little bit weird because there's, there's no longer a Y button. Nintendo controllers always had a Y and an X button. Now it's just a B and an A here. It's a little bit different. Now this is an interesting layout. Instead of having, um, you know, the four button layout like we have on the Super Nintendo and the PlayStation, we have six buttons and this was really used as another D-pad. Anyone ever play the uh, Torok games, you'll know that this was how you uh, could navigate around the world. Use this as your up, down, left, and right. And that's sort of what morphed into the style of dual shock or, you know, dual analog configurations. So we really do have 
the Nintendo 64 controller to thank uh, for bringing the analog to um, consoles. And then PlayStation was like, hey, we got to get us some of that analog. And oh, they did. They got two analogs. These are, well, you can see the dirt on these the textured analogs. And they said, you know what, let's put a button underneath there. So we have, you can press that down. We've got more buttons underneath there. It's still a Super Nintendo controller. This, this layout is a Super Nintendo controller. Uh, and I know Ken Kutaragi had a little bit to do with this, but the designer of this controller was Tayo Goto. And one of the best things about this controller, it's kind of like the right size. It's not as big as some of the other controllers on the market. It's not as big as the N64 and certainly not as big as the Duke, which was Xbox's controller that came out. So it, it fits most hand sizes, even though I've got like eh, medium to large size hands, it fits my hands. If your hands are tiny, it still works just fine. Now, having the analog here, you have two analogs that are in the same place. So if you're navigating 3D worlds, one is moving you know, directionally through the world and the other is controlling uh, your X and Y axis to look up and down. Well, it's um, interesting in my opinion to have them both here at the same, in, the, in the same spot. Now we can still go back and play our side scrollers or our fighting games or whatever we like to play. I actually play fighting games with this instead. I've, I have an easier time doing moves uh, with the D-pad on these than I do using the analogs. So we have a lot of options there. And then, of course, we have our analog toggle button. We had that on the original controllers. No longer need that. The space is used by something completely different on the PS4 and 5 controllers. See, we have the touch-sensitive thing here. So it's, it's evolved, but it, it's still the same. I don't have a PS5 controller, but you can see here, even on the DualShock 4, it is still the same. Except, you know, they just moved some things. I hate where they put the option button. We've got a share button there. So there's that. On the back here... Nothing. No extra buttons, but we do have L and R. I'm going to call this the king of controllers. We can argue all you want. Almost everything that came after this is somehow derivative. It's not as important as the Super Nintendo controller, but this is something that you can universally use on your computer, and it works with just about any game on the market. This may not be um, the only king. There could be two kings. This is the other king, or shall we call this the queen? It's just, it's, if we're playing chess, this would be the queen because this controller, they went back to the drawing board after the messes with the previous controllers. You see this? This is the original Xbox controller. Let me show you how, how oh yeah, that's how big it is. That's Donald Trump's hands right there. But look at this thing, codenamed the Duke, or I guess they called it, they actually called it Fatty inside Microsoft. Look at this thing, that's it, that's fatty, but I guess that's not politically correct, so they just called it the Duke. Two weird buttons up here. It was just a ginormous controller, terrible uh, D-pad. One of the worst D-pads in history, so they know they needed to fix some things. Outside of America, this is mostly the controller, actually outside of the Western world, I should say, in Asia and that sort of thing. This is mostly the controller, which is a huge upgrade because it was smaller, easier to handle. The weird button placement here it's weird to have two official button configurations so this one didn't last very long and then we had the xbox 360 controller which was a little bit better but microsoft put a hundred million dollars into redesigning the xbox one controller and we finally got a controller with a quintessential layout i mean all they really had to do was just call nintendo and be like what are you what are you all up to how's this gonna work and they decided to put their stuff into this position but guess who did it first Nintendo did the analog up here underneath the thumb and then another analog here. What they did was take the C buttons here that are on like the N64 controller, move them down and make them a second analog. Now the button layout over here, that's something totally Nintendo. They like to push things and innovate and they like to create button schemes specifically for their titles. So while these buttons are not gonna be as comfortable for someone who wants to play just any game on any system, sit down on your computer and play like any side scroller, play any you know first person game or whatever, it's not gonna be as comfortable for that. Now, while this was analog, it wasn't used that way uh, as much as some things, but you can use it that way. It was mostly used for like camera controls and stuff like that in the Mario and the Zelda games. But we'll do a separate video talking about the design of this, who designed it, and why does this even here? It's so terrible. <laughs> this this D-pad is tiny and almost useless. But they decided to put the analog stick under your thumb. And it's really comfortable and it's in the right spot. 
and your 3D worlds are easily navigable now. And so Microsoft was like, yeah, we got to get us some of that. And then they messed up with their big stupid controller. And finally, by the time we get to the Xbox 360 and the Xbox One, we have a real controller, a nice controller that's essentially a GameCube controller mixed with a Super Nintendo controller. Similar functionality to what you would get with a PlayStation controller, except perhaps more comfortable for people who want to have the analog in this position. The only thing that's weird about it is, you know, you, you still have offset hands now when you want to do a dual analog game. But for a lot of games that use the analog, you know, to move your character around third person games and that sort of thing, action adventure games, and then some buttons here, well, it's really accessible and it works with just about any game on the computer, on the PC. So this one is probably one of the most used controllers in the world along with the DualShock. So these are the king and queen of controllers, in my opinion. They have essentially the same layouts, other than the fact that the analog is moved. You know, the future controllers from Nintendo would all have this layout after they got past the Wii Pro Controller, which I don't know, this, this thing is not comfortable. It is what it is. <laughs> it works fine for like old school games and stuff like that but the Wii was not about controllers. It was about the Wii remote and the nunchuck. So this is what you got if you wanted to play some of those games. They needed an accessory and it plugs into the bottom of the Wii remote. If you've never seen one of these, there you go. It plugs into the bottom there. This is a, I've got a giant thing on there, <laughs> a giant rubber contraption on there in case I hit someone in the head with it. But then the future Nintendo controllers, this is a Switch Pro controller, are all pretty much the same as the Xbox controller. I think this one's about as comfortable. The D-pad's not as good as the Xbox controller or the PlayStation controller, but you know, it's all the same thing. You got LR, Z, R, and ZL on the back here. We've got exactly the same layout. I mean, look, it's very similar. I still think this is a little more comfortable and I like these analog, you know, the analog feel of the buttons on the Xbox controller. So it's still, in my opinion, a slightly better. The Xbox controller is still slightly better. Feels really good in your hands. The buttons line up under your thumbs correctly. So yeah, this is definitely, like I said, I don't think it's the best controller ever made. We'll make another video where I tell you what the best controller, but it's it's definitely the king of controllers because it just works with so many games across so many generations. It works on so many systems, PC, Linux, and all that sort of thing. And then this one here, we'll do the DualShock 4 because this one also has the compatibility across your computers. Um, you know, Linux systems, you can use it with Steam OS, you can use it uh, with Windows and that sort of thing. So it works with all of that as well as the PlayStation. So, you know, the, the newer PlayStation controllers, I actually like the feel of this one slightly better than the DualShock 5. I think I might've mentioned that, but regardless, this is where we are now. These are the quintessential controllers. All systems that come out have to have a controller that's reminiscent of this or else they're going to be weird. All the games that are made are typically made for, um, to be, you know, to be played on multiple systems and they need a, a layout that's going to be compatible across those systems other than the first party titles. But even then the controllers are going to have to work. So I believe we've boiled it down and we're not going to see too many weird controllers or weird accessories unless it's from Nintendo. So I am guess we're at this point just kind of seeing what Nintendo is going to do. But even Nintendo, they, you have to have, you know, something that works like this. And even if you're going to use the little, um, whatever those stupid things are called. Even if you're gonna use those, you need the ability to put them together into a, you know, a layout that's like this. So I believe this is where we are. The king of configurations, the king of controllers, and we'll say it's these two. Even though, like I said, Nintendo did all the innovation, the king and the queen are right here with Sony and Microsoft on these two products. I, I bought this at a stall in China. Yep, that's how it is. And the controller that we made here is um, specifically for people who want a controller to play all of the games on PC. This is our wireless Finnick controller. I'll do a little ad for this right now because this is a controller that I use a lot. Um, it's wireless 2.4 gigahertz. So you do need line of sight with your, with your dongle, wherever you plug it in, just make sure you can, you can see it. But charge it up and it works for a good long while. Um, it's the shape of the classic shape of the PlayStation controller here. I uh, didn't break anything there. But the one thing we did that's a little different with this controller is instead of just having it uh, work when it plugs into your computer, it works as an Xbox controller. So those, even though it's the layout of the PlayStation controller, when you plug this in, 
um, it'll be like, oh, a generic Xbox controller, because that is recognized the most by your computer. But if you want to use an older game that doesn't support direct input, does not support the Xbox controller, hold down the home button for four or five seconds and it will transform this from a, a regular X input controller, like your Xbox controller, into just a generic direct input controller so you can use it that way. So this is actually more compatible than the Xbox controller or the PlayStation controller with older games. Uh, even then, I play most of this stuff as an Xbox controller using Retro uh, Arch or something like that. So, anyway, the king of layouts right here. Do you agree that this is the king? Again, not the best. We're making another video talking about what the best controller is. It's not the same controller. It's a little, little more specialized. So we'll talk about that soon. Let me know what you think in the comments. And I'm very curious. What do you think the most important controller is? And what do you think the best controller is. So two things, please comment below, let me know.